We'll begin tonight with new developments today in the controversy over so-called cash-for-access fundraisers involving the Prime Minister and Liberal Cabinet Ministers. Former Conservative Cabinet Minister Chuck Strahl has resigned as a director of the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation after Liberal MPs used his name to legitimize a $1 million donation to the foundation. That donation was made by Chinese businessmen who had attended a Liberal Party fundraiser where the Prime Minister was the guest of honour. The guests at the dinner last May paid $1,500 each to attend. The opposition parties have accused the Prime Minister of breaking his own ethics guidelines. In his resignation letter, Chuck Strahl writes, While I've always supported the goals of the Foundation to promote discussion of and education in the humanities, I'm unwilling to be used as a foil for the Liberal Party of Canada, who has chosen to use my participation in Foundation activities as some sort of cover for their own questionable conduct. The Prime Minister is on a visit to Africa, where the issue has followed him. Here's what he had to say about his connections to the foundation named after his father. The Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation was uh, established uh, as a, a, an educational scholarship foundation, uh, encouraging research into the humanities uh, and social sciences uh, in the years following my father's death. Uh, I have not been in any way uh, associated formally or informally with uh, the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation uh, in many, many years. I stepped down uh, uh, from any of my family-related responsibilities uh, shortly after having uh, gotten elected uh, in order to demonstrate that there is a tremendous separation there. And indeed, uh, the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation on its board, in its, uh, in its operations, has drawn on uh, leaders from all uh, political persuasions in this country, including people like uh, uh, Chuck Strahl and Megan Leslie, who uh, uh, currently are part of the uh, uh, Trudeau Foundation. So I'm sure uh, they will uh, reassure you that they are very much separate from uh, anything uh, I do as, uh, uh, as the Prime Minister or, or as leader of the Liberal Party. Uh, clearly, the Prime Minister made those comments uh, in Africa before he found out that Chuck Strahl resigned from the Trudeau Foundation today. And in the House of Commons today, the government found itself on the firing line again over the Prime Minister's fundraising activities. fundraisers. He said it just two days ago. And in fact, he defended the Liberal Cash for Access fundraisers as a means to conduct this government business. It's a shocking admission, and I'm not surprised that the fisheries minister doesn't, is surprised himself that the Prime Minister said that. But he did. So can the Prime Minister explain to Canadians how soliciting donations from these individuals while at the same time conducting government business is in any way ethical? Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Minister of Fisheries. Mr. Speaker, the opposition House Leader knows very well that only Canadians can make donations to Canadian political parties. And Mr. Speaker, I would assume those are the kind of Canadians that attended a $500 a ticket fundraising event with Joe Oliver on May 19, 2015, or maybe the $500 a ticket fundraiser with Jason Kenney on January 30, 2015, or maybe the $1,500 a ticket fundraiser with former Immigration Minister Chris Alexander at a private home in Toronto. Maybe those are the kind of events that she's familiar with. Access for cash has to do with the Ministry of Fisheries. Of course, it is a little bit fishy. Uh, if only the government had some sort of guidelines about these events, Mr. Speaker. Oh, wait. Quote, there should be no preferential access to government or the appearance of preferential access accorded to individuals because they have made financial contributions to political parties. Can the Liberals please try to explain how their cash for access fundraisers do not break their own Liberal rules? They're the government. The Honourable Minister of Fisheries. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we know very well where the government and the member from Outremont, I think, knows that as well. Uh, but let me say, Mr. Speaker, He's wondering why the fisheries minister is getting up. He's continually, Mr. Speaker, on a fishing trip to find perceived and imagined wrongdoing where none exists. He knows that very well, Mr. Speaker. We're proud to follow all of the fundraising rules, just as he did when he went to Edmonton at $300 a person. 
Well, let's discuss the latest developments on this story now with the three members of Parliament who had joined me from the foyer of the House of Commons tonight. Liberal MP Marco Mendicino is with us again this evening. Yeah. Marilyn Glad, who is a Conservative MP who has been raising questions about this in the House, and Rachel Blaney is a new Democrat MP. It's good to see you all. Good to see you. Thanks, Mr. Mendicino, when we spoke last night on this program on this issue, you pointed to the presence of former Conservative MP and Cabinet Minister Chuck Strahl as a director of the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation to, I, I think, legitimize the donation made by those Chinese business, businessmen to the foundation after they met with Justin Trudeau. Uh, Mr. Strahl today resigned from the foundation. So what does that say? Well, you'd have to ask Mr. Strahl what his reasons were, but uh, what I said yesterday applies equally today. Um, the Trudeau Foundation is an independent charity, independent from government. Um, it is made up of uh, individuals who do not serve in government, and so any attempt to try and conflate uh, people who contribute to independent charities, which support science and research, the kinds of things that the opposition party, the Conservative Party in particular, didn't support in the last administration when they made cuts to the Research Council and, and cuts to Stat Statistics Canada. Uh, people can contribute to those charities uh, as much as they would like. Well, here's, here's what Chuck Strahl said. I'm unwilling to be used as a foil for the Liberal Party of Canada, uh, who has chosen to use my participation in foundation activities as some sort of cover for their own questionable conduct. His words, again, I'm not going to add to them. I would just simply say that uh, he previously sat on a board of an independent charity, uh, which people are, are, are open to contribute to. That's different than contributing to political parties, which is restricted to Canadian citizens, which is restricted uh, uh, in, the, in the way of uh, individual amounts, which people can contribute, which is restricted in terms of... Uh, uh, businesses and, and unions who, who cannot contribute at the federal level, and all of this contributes to a, a very, very rigorous, strict set of uh, laws and ethical rules which we abide by. Uh, Marilyn Gladu, the Liberal side today noted that the former Conservative Finance Minister, Joe Oliver, was the guest of honour at a private fundraiser for the party at $500 a guest. Uh, Jason Kenney did at least one for $500. Former Immigration Minister Chris Alexander did at least one that charged $1,500, according to the, the Liberals today in the House, and I haven't heard anyone deny it. Uh, why is that any different than what you accuse the Liberals of doing? Well, the issue is, is this, that it's not just about um, the preferential access that's resulting in, in some cases, conflicts of interest. You know, you've got the Prime Minister having these cash for access fundraisers and uh, people showing up wanting approval for their new bank and getting it. You've got the Finance Minister doing his fundraisers and the next thing you know, the people that show up are the Halifax Port of Authority. You know, there, there's some serious questions then about the ethics and the integrity of the cabinet ministers and the prime minister. All right, let me point out, because we've talked about Chuck Strahl, uh, Megan Leslie, the former New Democrat MP, who's also uh, a member of this board, and she's just tweeted out, I will remain on the board of the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. The foundation's work on human rights, environment, citizenship, and Canada's role in the world is needed now more than ever. I enjoy my work on the board and think I can contribute. It is unfortunate that this issue has been politicized. Uh, Rachel Blaney, let me move to you. Uh, there's a former New Democrat MP mm -hmm. who, uh, who's remaining on the board, although she's pointing out she doesn't like the way this has been politicized. Who's to blame for why it's been politicized? Uh, well, you know, I think at the end of the day, Canadians are asking questions. And so the opposition is doing their work, and their work is to stand up and ask those questions. Ra you know, we just had an NDP motion come up at the Ethics Committee to right. have a discussion about what's happening, what is the fundraisers, uh, and what are we looking at in terms of really making sure that we're following those ethics. Right. You wanted to, you know, the NDP wanted to call uh, the... Uh, the Liberal the organizer, Party yep. organizer of uh, development and events before the committee to ask Absolutely. what goes on at these events. And, and you know what? If the, the government's going to keep standing up, they did. They blocked it and they shut down the committee. And the reality is if they're going to stand up again and again in the House of Commons and say there's no conflict of interest, we followed the rules, then let's show the Canadian public that that's in fact happening. The fact that they shut it down leads us to believe there's some very important concerns that we should be having and that Canadians are having. And at the end of the day, we have to remember these are are people that are representatives of the government they have power and they're talking to people who want influence and so we need to question that Canadians are questioning that and let's really have this vigorous conversation and I just want to point out that the Prime Minister of Canada told his ministers that he wanted a higher standard than the rules that were set out and I think having the debate of the Conservatives did it so that it's okay for us to do it as well that is the issue in itself Canadians want better okay Mr. And we're living up Hang on, Mr. So, okay, Mr. Mendez, you know, that, that, that is a question, I guess, today. Is, uh, is, is it 
is it reasonable to, to make your case by saying those guys did it too when your offer to Canadians during the election campaign was we're going to do it much differently and we're going to have much tighter uh, restrictions around the way we do business with people who contribute to the party? The question is whether or not we're living up to that standard, and as I've argued on many occasions, we are. And I agree, uh, the opposition does fulfill an important function in asking the question. What they should do is listen to the answer and not continue to ask the same question in the hopes that there will be a different one in the absence of any credible information or evidence which would suggest that we're actually in violation of either the law or uh, the breach of the standards. And I just want to come back to the point that my colleague Marilyn had made regarding the bank, which has been the subject of some speculation. I want to point out that the negotiations for the approval of that bank did begin in the last administration with actually my predecessor, Joe Oliver. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, it's important not to conflate what is legitimate, lawful, ethical um, fundraising, which we have addressed squarely, and we continue to address during uh, question period every day. So there is a robust debate going on in the House of Commons, which the public um, is paying very close attention to. But, but, but what was promised was no, no, no appearance of access, no and appearance. appearance. And, as I, and, and I guess my point is, who gets to decide what well, is... Well, the public gets yeah. to decide well, what the appearance and, looks like. Sorry, it's time to government okay. listen. If I could be permitted to finish, thank look, you This much. is a very healthy conversation, I but would, I like... What I would like to say is... Mr. Manichino, just, Mr. Manichino, give me one second here, just to tell, it, it doesn't... Our viewers really appreciate it, and they let us know. They like to hear people speak. So, Mr. Mendicino, go ahead, and then I'll move down the line. Everybody will get time. Thank you very much, Peter. You're right that there, there are definitely um, issues regarding appearances and optics, and that's why we have the rule. The question is um, whether or not there is a reasonable um, apprehension here of any conflict of, of, of interest. And as I have said before, there is not because the government shows no preference of access to people who contribute. And indeed, the members of our caucus spend the vast majority of our time with people who do not contribute. So the reasonable person will, will take that into consideration. And the other thing Thing that I was going to say before is, is that while there's been an, an attempt by the opposition to conflate um, what is lawful ethical fundraising with contributions to independent charities, in particular the Trudeau Foundation, the negotiations for contributions to the Trudeau Foundation, which is independent, also began in July of 2014. So right. all of this predates our election. No conflict, either real or perceived. Ma Marilyn Gladue, I'll, I'll give you your time now. Go ahead. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's clearly a preferential access and the perception of preferential action, uh, access. The uh, co Commissioner for Ethics thinks it's unsavory. Uh, the lobbying commissioner sees a problem. Canada 2020 is starting to put its own rules in place for any uh, events that have to do with the Prime Minister and his cabinet because they can see there's a problem. The right. Canadian it's public clear to sponsors of their Absolutely. events that that, that, that sponsorship in no way be, gives them access to... They are not to be doing uh, these fundraisers with people that do business with the government. The Justice Minister had her fundraisers with lawyers um, while she has uh, appointments, judicial appointments to make, lawyers that do business with the federal government, and, and the same is true all the way down the line. So this has to stop, and the Prime Minister has to come to a higher standard of integrity. That's what Canadians are wanting. All right. Uh, uh, Rachel Blaney, uh, what... what uh, uh, I guess at some point, I mean, it was your leaders now raised it a number of times that uh, the, the conversation maybe now uh, to deal with these issues uh, needs to perhaps return to a conversation around uh, public subsidies for political parties, which we used to have. Mm -hmm. uh, is that where this needs to head, I think, to take out any, any questions for Canadians about whether these things are above board? Well, I think that's a part of the vigorous conversation that needs to happen. Obviously, this is really resounding with people, and Canadians are letting us know. You know, I really wish that the Prime Minister was here talking about this a little bit more, answering these questions that are so profound. The reality, it is going to the Trudeau Drove Foundation. People have questions about what it means when significant amount of monies with people of influence are being placed in those organizations when there's such a close tie to the Prime Minister. And I think it makes sense for the Prime Minister to stand up and answer those questions well, for the Canadian just, people. Just, Mr. Mayor, no, let me just ask a question. For, uh, uh, I, I suppose how, it doesn't sound like this story goes away, so I guess part of, part of my, uh, part of what I'm wondering is, Mr. Mendicino, is that at some point is this issue, issue going to resolve itself? How many people are going to want to keep having private house parties for politicians when their names get published and there's controversy surrounding uh, these events? Uh, is there a chance they'll just stop happening? Well, they're not private. 
Um, the fundraisers are published. They're accessible to people who wish to contribute. Um, I suppose it's up to the opposition in part about how long they wish to continue asking questions. And they're entitled to do that. And we will continue to answer them in the way that we have in the past, which is that we follow the law, we abide by the ethical rules, and any attempt by the opposition to raise the specter of impropriety has to be met with actual concrete information. Right. And, so, and thus far, there has been none. So I guess really the, the answer to your question is time will tell. But in the meantime, our government is focused on the priorities that do matter to Canadians. We want to give them tax relief as we have to the middle class. We want to work on the economy, on jobs, on climate change, on infrastructure. And that is our focus, and we will conti continue to have it that way. Right. I mean, so Marilyn Gladu, do you, do you think these... Uh, these kinds of fundraisers maybe should be stopped. I mean, it, the government's at, clearly at a disadvantage here because if you're in opposition, it's much easier to have these fundraisers because you're not getting access to the levers of power when you, when you go to these private fundraisers. Absolutely. They're the government, and so um, they have to stop having these preferential access things. You want to you talk about concrete facts. 790 Canadians participated. That's 0.002% of the population. That's exclusive. That's preferential access to uh, people of influence that are in the government. So it needs to stop, and we count on the Prime Minister to hold the standard that he set in place with his own rules. Okay. Uh, how do you raise money, Rachel Blaney, if you stop all these kinds of fundraisers? Well, you know, the reality is these are small groups with ministers. They are small groups of people with influence who want influence on the ministers. So when I hold a fundraiser in my riding where we have people over for a spaghetti dinner, it's a very different situation. And if people were in their riding doing their work, there would be a quieter reality because we wouldn't be having the people of influence talking to the people who have the power in this government. And we cannot ever say that is okay. And the reality well, is it happened with both governments, right. both the Conservatives and the Liberals, and it's something that Canadians are not happy. That would be all that would be all fine and well if if the suggestion is that MPs on the government side are not hosting smaller fundraisers, smaller fundraisers at, at lower We're price points. We're talking about ministers but, having and included, people with in, correct Sorry, if I could just power. be permitted to finish. Okay. No, I, 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 actually, I got Okay, I, I think we've all, one thing, we've all made our points. And I think we are. We, and we're out of time for this conversation tonight, but uh, we'll have a chance to talk about it again. So thank you all for being Thanks, here. Peter. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you.